Okay, now, this idea, this idea of understanding velocity in terms of displacement paves the way for even more important ideas when we come back to simple harmonic motion in, in particular, okay? So underneath where you've written your review, if you were writing your review, okay? I want you to um, write another subheading, which is another differential equation for simple harmonic motion. <coughs> okay, now, I'm going to introduce it the way I introduced it before, which is to show you how this works in a general situation and then bring it back to simple harmonic motion. Okay? So, here's what we're going to do. You've got here, right, um, velocity in terms of displacement. I want to get acceleration in terms of velocity. Mm, acceleration in terms of velocity. How do I do that? Well, I want you to remember what is acceleration. Right? As a derivative, as a derivative, it's the first derivative of this function. Is that right? Does that make sense? It's the second derivative of displacement, but it's the first derivative of velocity. Okay? So I can write it in these terms. Now, you'll see this in all the textbooks. I find it slightly maddening. I'll tell you why. Um, we've shown you, right? I've shown you, that you can have things in terms of x and dots, right? X dot and x double dot, right? And an alternative way to explain that or to write it is to call this v for velocity and this a for acceleration or apple depending on your mood. Uh, but this, this mixes up the two, which I find very frustrating. It's like, we'll just, just use one scheme or the other. I know why they do it. Um, it's because writing dx dot is just as confusing, frankly. So that's why you're going to see this a whole lot, but try not to get confused. Okay. So what we've got is dv on dt here. Right. I'm going to use the same trick that I did here, but kind of in reverse. Okay. I want to think about this in terms of chain rule. How do I get this in terms of x? Right? Because that's, that's what this idea here was. Right? Well, think about this. dv on dt is kind of like, it's, it's what happens after you've done chain rule. Okay? You had two derivatives before, and the chain rules cancelled, and then out came one nice derivative. Okay? What would be the preceding line? If you were trying to get to this derivative from chain rule, you'd have dv on something times something on dt, right? This would be the chain rule line that would lead you here, okay? Now, when you write it like this, you start to realize there aren't that many other choices, are there, for what you could put in here, right? You certainly can't put acceleration because that's over here, right? Instead, your only other alternative is displacement, right? Okay, so how did I get this line? Going from here to here. I was trying to think about reversing chain rule. That's how I arrived at this, okay? Um, the reason why I'm laboring this point is because, like I said, textbooks, they will show you this series of steps, and it's kind of like, why, why do any of the steps connect to each other? What's the point? What are we getting at, okay? I'm trying to end up at another different equation, a simple harmonic motion, okay? And this is the path that I'm going to go. Now, have a look at this. Um, this, is, this is x double dot, right? By introducing chain rule in here, right? I've got this over here, dx on dt, but I know what dx on dt is, right? That's just velocity, isn't it? First derivative with respect to time, okay? So this is actually this. <coughs> I've, I've moved him over there, okay? So look at him for a second. What does this mean? At this point, this is acceleration in terms of velocity and how velocity is changing with respect, with respect to displacement. That's a bit confusing, but okay. So I'm going to go one step further. I want to get, get this just in terms of velocity. Okay. So this, D, this V here, okay, I'm going to do another step of chain rule, but it's going to be a bit confusing. All right. I want to get rid of this DV here, this DV. Hmm. How will I do it? I can do chain rule on this, can't I? I need an on dv somewhere, right? Times dv on dx. That'll do it, won't it? Okay, because these dv's will cancel. 
How do I put it in there? Hmm. Now I have a couple of choices, right? I could, I could introduce another variable like, like time or something like that here. But actually, that's just going to take me back where I came from. Okay, so that's actually not such a good idea. Instead, what I've got here is, well, this piece just comes from here, right? So what I'm going to have here, in here, should come from this. So what's this going to be? If I have, for instance, the derivative with respect to v of something that gives me v. Mm. Think about it going in the other direction. Is there something we can differentiate with respect to v that will land us back on v? And the question we're asking is, what's the primitive of v? That, that's what a primitive is, right? Something that if you differentiate it with respect to that, you'll get this back. And the answer is, it's half v squared. That's the, um, well, that's one of the primitives, isn't it? Okay? Because if you differentiate this, the 2 comes out the front, the power reduces, and there you are. You get v. Okay? All right, look at this. Now I can undo my chain rule thing, right? Watch. My, um, my v's cancel, right? Or my dv's, rather. Okay? So if that cancels with that, what you get left with is this. Hmm, have a look at this. So this is a bit confusing, okay? What does this mean? What does this mean? This is about acceleration in terms of velocity. <coughs> acceleration in terms of velocity? Hold on a second. This is everything in terms of time. So that means if you can tell me what time you are, right, then I can tell you where you are, how fast you're going, and what force is acting on you. This one here is velocity, sorry, acceleration in terms of displacement. So if you can tell me where you are, I can tell you what force is acting on you. So what does this mean? This is acceleration in terms of velocity. This means if you can tell me how fast you're going and, and which direction, then I can tell you what force is acting on you. Can I say that again? Because that's important. And we'll see if we can think of an example. If you can tell me how fast you're going, I can tell you what force is acting on you, how you're being accelerated. Okay? When can we think can we think of examples like this? I gave you the rubber band for this, right? Which was depending on where you are, a force is acting on you in a certain way. Can anyone think of a force that acts on you in different ways depending on how fast you're going? Air resistance. Air resistance. Now, admittedly, this is sort of Thinking of this off the top of your head is a bit physics biased, but it's okay. Now we can see all of it together. How does air resistance work, right? Well, the faster something travels through the air, right, the more air is pushing back on it, resisting it, right? Or you could say accelerating it in a certain direction, namely opposite to where it's going, okay? And obviously, if you're standing still, you're not experiencing any air resistance, right? It's not pushing you in any particular direction. There's no acceleration acting on whatever object you've got, okay? So this is just one example. Um, all I mean is that we can understand things like this, including simple harmonic motion, if we use this equation, okay? So let me give you an example. And this is where I'm going to pick out um, simple harmonic motion. <coughs> Okay, you can recognize this as simple harmonic motion, can't you? Okay, it fits this equation here, right? So it's very simple. The center of motion is the origin, right? Because it isn't this kind of equation here. And you can read off that n is 2. n is 2. What does that mean? Do you remember what n signified in our original equations over here? It was, it was, it was period, wasn't it? Right? Do you remember that? Because... Where did these equations came, come from? They came from these kinds of examples. That's where n was, do you remember? And so when you differentiate successive times, that's how the n comes out the front because of chain rule, right? Okay, so from this, from this equation, you can already see, not knowing anything else, the center of motion is the origin, and you can tell me something about its period. Namely, well, if n equals two, what is the period? How do we do period, do you remember? It's 2 pi on n, isn't it? 2 pi on n. So the period of motion is pi seconds, okay? 
So this is really cool. When you know these kinds of things, right, the reason we're developing these is so that off this, you can read things off really quickly, okay? You can know things about it even without doing any differentiation or calculus or anything like that, okay? All right, now, how am I going to use this result, right? Watch. I've got acceleration in terms of displacement, right? Well, if I have acceleration, then I can have velocity. Okay, this makes sense for two reasons. Number one, <coughs> acceleration comes from velocity, right? There. That makes sense. We're used to thinking about it in terms of time, but that's not the only way you can think about it. In terms of, think of it in terms of displacement. But it also makes sense here because, look, see, I have this in terms of x, right? So I want to integrate with respect to x. That's what you did over here, right? But I can do it directly, right? Because this is the on dx, right? So I can integrate everything with respect to x. What's going to happen? What am I going to get on the left and the right hand side? When you integrate this guy, you'll just get half b squared, right? That makes sense. What happens over here? Minus 2x squared. And then you've got a constant, don't you? Okay. I mean, we've got a constant from both of you, but we just sort of lump them together. Okay, now I want velocity here. That will get me back to this kind of situation, right? So for instance, if I multiply both sides by 2, you're going to get this. For this reason, by the way, um, you'll see some textbooks will often introduce this as half c. So you end just, just end up with a single c here. But it doesn't matter. It's still just a constant. Okay, now, have a look at this for a second with me. This is a bit tricky. Um, there's a problem here. If I want to know velocity, like something like this, okay? I don't know velocity yet. What do I know? I know v squared, which really is a way of saying, um, I know what speed is. See that? That there is positive, right? So that's what speed is. It doesn't care about which direction you're going in. Okay? But I don't actually know velocity. I know velocity squared. Okay? So how do you go from here to here like, and actually get the sign? Any suggestions? <coughs> You'll need some kind of condition, won't you? Right? But that, you need more than that. Think, why have we arrived at this? Why have we got this equation? Well, I suppose you can think about it in a couple of reasons. Number one, we got it from here, right? But number two, what kind of motion is this? We already knew from the first line what kind of motion this was. It's simple harmonic, right? So therefore, you ought to be expecting it to go in both directions, depending on where you are, right? But the problem with these equations is it strips out the act where you are, like which direction you're in. It strips out left or right, or up down, because this is squared and this is squared, right? So that's why all you know is the magnitude, just the speed, okay? So in order to get out of this, you need to know more information about the question, right? They would have to tell you more than just this. And then you'll be able to determine the sign. Just off that, you can't tell. Okay, that's, I mean, you don't know. Remember, this could have been, um, this could have been sine, or it could have been cos, and its initial phase could be anything, right? And so therefore, you don't know which way you're going at which time. You just know how fast you're going, okay? But this is an example of how it works. You start with your differential equation here, right? And this is what you want to substitute in. Okay, you see that? You don't need to prove that, you can just use it. All right? 